Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be doing the most requested video on my channel, which is going retro. We're going to be getting a Raspberry Pi to play Super Nintendo or NES or N64 or PlayStation using an image called Retro Pi. So let's get started. So before we begin, I'm actually going to be installing this on a Raspberry Pi 3 in a 5 inch display and also a Super Nintendo controller that's USB driven. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Now I also recommend getting a USB thumb drive to load the ROMs in which is much easier than doing the network method. Alright guys, so for downloading RetroPie, I would navigate over to retropie.org.uk. Now I'm going to leave all the links in the description below so don't worry about trying to follow that on top. Now hit on the download tab and then select the Raspberry version that you have. So for us we have Raspberry Pi 3 and that's the link I'm going to be selecting. As soon as it's done downloading, remember to extract it. Next, we're going to be installing this image into an SD card. So for Windows, I recommend using Win32 Disk Imager. I'll leave all the links in the description below. Now hit, once you hit the download link, it's going to have that 4 second buffer time before it actually downloads. So allow that to happen. Once you have the file, install the application as usual. Um, for me, I would just agree to everything and then hit next, hit next, and then hit next, and then go through the whole setup. As soon as that's done, mm -hmm. start the Win32 Disk Imager, and then make sure it's on the SD card drive. Open the image that we just downloaded, and then hit write. Give it a few minutes, depending on the speed of the SD card. At the end, it's going to say write successful and that's your SD card. For Mac users, I would use this application called Apple Pie Baker. Again, links are going to be in the description. So here, it's much easier than using command line. I recommend using this program. As soon as you're done, this website looks a little bit overwhelming. Just remember to scroll all the way to the bottom and you're going to see a download link on the bottom right. Once you're done downloading, start the application. Now select the SD card that you're going to be using, then find the image that you downloaded to restore into your SD card. So for us it's going to be RetroPie, hit open, and then restore back up. Again, it's going to take a few minutes depending on the speed of your SD card, but once it's done it's going to have a pop-up saying it's successful. And then there's your image. Okay, so for the initial boot, you're going to have to set up your game controller. So as soon as this screen comes up, press and hold the key and then it's going to bring you to the configuration. Just follow the steps up down left right you know start select. Now when you get to a part where you don't have those buttons you can just press and hold the key for like two seconds and it'll unassign it. So just do that for most of your keys that you don't have and when you're done hit the OK button. As soon as you get started with the retro pie what you want to do is take a USB and stick it in a blank USB. Now it's going to take uh, roughly around 30 seconds or so for me you're gonna see the light blinking and it'll stop blinking once it's done what it's doing right now is creating the file structure and I recommend using USB because it's much easier than the network way but it's up to you now once you're done with that take the USB out and then stick it into your computer now as in your computer all you have to do is double click the USB open up the folders and you're gonna see a ROM folder once you stretch that out you're gonna see your emulator or the emulator you want to play that's where you would stick in the ROM file. And once you're done with that, you stick the USB back into your RetroPie, and it's not gonna load it right away, so what you're gonna have to do is actually reboot the emulation station. So go to the main menu, go down to quit, restart emulation station, and as soon as it's done restarting, you're gonna see a new menu that says Super Nintendo because that's the ROM reloaded in. Now, for the Wi-Fi portion, head back over to RetroPie setup, and scroll down to Wi-Fi. Now the next part you're gonna need a keyboard because you, keep, you need to type in your password. So here just hit connect to Wi-Fi, your SSID, the password for your SSID, hit OK, and then you're gonna notice an IP address up on top. Remember that IP. Now if you happen to miss it, you could actually go back up and say show IP and actually reload that and it'll show you the IP for the uh, RetroPie. Now we're gonna need this for the next step. Now head over to Windows, do the two slashes, 192.168, you know, your IP address. And as soon as you go in, you're going to see a folder called ROMs. Same thing like the USB method before. Scroll down to the emulator that you want to play, and that's where you drop your ROMs. 
Now for Mac, it's a little bit easier or almost the same. You go to Finder, go to Connect to Server, and then type in the IP on top and then hit Connect. And then as soon as you hit Connect, it's gonna ask you if you wanna sign in as you know, a user or a guest. I use guest. And then select the ROM folder. Hit OK and then scroll down to the emulator that you're gonna be playing with. That's where you drop your ROMs. So very similar to the USB method and very similar to the Windows method. Now, once you get back in, you're gonna be able to load your ROMs and play the game that you wanna play. Now, my favorite game of all time for Super Nintendo is Mega Man X. It's one of the best games ever, so if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. But if you have, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Thanks guys for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit that little like button. If you got any questions, leave it in the comments below. Now for the shout out of the week, I will be calling out Sound Duck Films. Now if you notice, my editing has been getting a little bit better, or I would say it's a little bit better because I've been doing more transitions and stuff like that. Now I actually learned everything from this channel, Sound Duck Films. He does a lot of tutorials on Premiere, After Effects, and stuff like that. I'm still learning, and I'm finding his channel to be great help. So check him out and show him my support. And if you haven't done so already, hit the little subscribe button on this channel. That way you get notification on the next video that's going to be out. Now, as of right now, I am actually vacationing in Hong Kong. So I have vlogs up on, the, on my second channel. So check those out if you haven't done so already. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.